Blessed love brothers and sisters, this is not a Shaba lesson, this is an impromptu video. I'm going to title it Colonizers, Confederates Against Ethnic Israel. Colonizers, Confederates Against Ethnic Israel, brothers and sisters. In this video proceeding, right? You're going you gotta to have this guy, this uh Caucasian dude. Right, brothers and sisters, outlining, explaining details what they want to do to so-called black people. And those plans are being carried out as we speak, brothers and sisters, You're right? This plan has been in motion since the time they took us from uh, Northeast Africa and surrounding areas, brothers and sisters, right? From the West Coast of of Africa, right, brothers and sisters? That was a plan all along, right here in America. And it's a and it's a global plan, whether we are scattered, you understand? And they, they are. Uh, you see, brothers, they know who we are, in the brothers and sisters. These colonizers know who we are. That is why they joined confederacy against us to try to destroy us. But we are still here because we are the seed of the Mosai Yahuwah. Right? And they cannot destroy us. So they come up with all manner of wicked devices to try and harm us. But eventually it turns back on them, brothers and sisters. Because the Mosai is not going to let them utterly destroy us many of us gonna get caught in the deception because we don't adhere to the commandments of the most high right a lot of our um health issues could and can be avoided if we follow the dietary laws of the most high and keep his commandments you understand don't get me wrong you know Certain things you have to go to the hospital for, like surgery and so forth, like that. But you know, if it's not serious or detriment to you, brothers and sisters, right? You know what I mean? Come back to the commandments. Eat right. You understand? According to dietary laws, right? And keep his commandments, brothers and sisters, right? But you know how I like to, I like to put things in, 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 in. In context with scripture, so let's go to uh the Helalim the Psalms the Helalim eighty three colon five. For they have consulted together with one consent, they are confederate against thee. So this is exactly what's going on in the video you're about to see, brothers and sisters. They have this confederation against so called black people. They want because in their words, if Black people are wiped off the face of the earth or, or you know what I mean, get unalive. I don't know why they say unalive, killed. Huh? Then that will solve the race problem. <laughs> I tell you, this is how diabolical and sick these people think, brother and sister. This is why I say, you know what I mean, stay away from them, brother and sister. Do not mix your seed with them. You understand? Because they leeches, brothers and sisters. They know who you are. They want your blood. They want your melanin. They want your skin. Even though they don't like you, they want all those things that the Most High give you as a blessing. That's what they want. But <laughs> unbeknownst to them, you see what I mean? They're trying to take our melanin. You know what's going to happen to them? Eventually, it's going to reverse and give them side effects and kill all of them too. Because it's not genetically yours. Yes, brothers and sisters, as it was in the days of Noe or Noach, so shall it be in the days of the coming Son of Man. What took place in Noah's time, brothers and sisters? Gene genetic uh, manipulation, following aging, having sex with daughters of Zion, bring forth giants, and as time go by, they start uh, doing genetical experiment, bringing forth hybrid humans. You understand? Crop the whole entire. Our living species, that's why the flood took place, brothers and sisters, to course correct what the wicked one has done. And even then, a remnant still left and continue on till this day. And you could see that present. The, the video I did uh, a day ago or so, this white woman injected melanin in her skin. That's, that's genetic 
that's genetic uh, manipulation, brothers and sisters, right before your eyes. We lived in days of Noah in this time, brothers and sisters, right? And so, <laughs> you see, brothers and sisters, so I'm showing you these things for you to wake up, brothers and sisters. You got to wake up and stop playing dumb. You understand? Know Ignorance is no excuse, brothers and sisters. You got to wake up. Alright, so watch this video, like, share, and subscribe. It's free. Bless the Lord, brothers and sisters. Of the America, in which he, posit he lays out all the numbers, and then he concludes that if we simply avoided allowing black people to have any access to health care, that within two or three generations, the whole race high out, and that would solve the race problem in America. When Teddy Roosevelt, 1912, proposed a national health care system, you know, people said no because black people will get it. When Franklin Roosevelt proposed a national health care system, it was the same thing. We don't want black people to get it. When, when uh, Truman tried it in 47, same thing. Don't want black people to get it. We, you know, we have to figure out a way to keep black people from using Medicare. And the way that they came up with was to have a 20% hole, a gap in Medicare, so that you had to pay 20% of your doctor's bill and your hospital bill, and that would discourage poor black people from showing up at the hospitals. Nearly 100% of the reason why the United States is the only country in the world that doesn't define healthcare as a right called Race, Tendencies, and Traits of the America, in which he, posit he lays out all the numbers, and then he concludes that if we simply avoided allowing black people to have any access to health care, that within two or three generations, the whole race high out, and that would solve the race problem in America. When Teddy Roosevelt, 1912, proposed a national health care system, you know, people said no because black people will get it. When Franklin Roosevelt proposed a national health care system, it was the same thing. We don't want black people to get it. When, when uh, Truman tried it in 47, same thing. Don't want black people to get it. We, you know, we have to figure out a way to keep black people from using Medicare. And the way that they came up with was to have a 20% hole, a gap in Medicare, so that you had to pay 20% of your doctor's bill and your hospital bill, and that would discourage poor black people from showing up at the hospitals. Nearly 100% of the reason why the United States is the only country in the world that doesn't define health care as a right is because of... So which led him to his second hypothesis, which is, was in his book Race Traits in 1896, which was that if white people who control the politics and most of the economy of the United States simply deny health care to black people... The black race, again his phrase, I out in two or three generations. And that would, quote, solve the race problem in America. Frederick Hoffman took this theory, pitched it to Congress, uh, gave lectures all across the United States to state legislatures, met with governors, um, uh, to physicians groups. He was, he was uh, uh, beloved by those establishments. He, by the way, he was the co-founder of the American Lung Association. I mean, the guy was no, no uh, uh, slouch. He was, he was powerful, he was famous, and people took him seriously. Woodrow Wilson, well, well, and, and this is why in 1912, when Teddy Roosevelt proposed a single-payer health care system to cover everybody with, as part of his square deal plan when he was running for president for, for you know, re-election, this was why that got shot down. Because white people, including the medical establishment, white people by and large said, particularly the white system of the South, said, wait a minute, if you cover everybody with health insurance, you're going to be covering black people too, and we can't have that. So that ended that discussion in 1912. It's also what, why they came after Franklin Roosevelt in 1936 when he proposed a single-payer system. It's why they came after Harry Truman in 1947 when he proposed a single-payer health care system. But black people, we can't do that. Black people will get that health care. Uh, you know, and, and this is why they came after John Kennedy in 1961 when he proposed a single-payer health care system. And it's why when Lyndon Johnson and Robert Ball were writing, writing the Medicare law in, the, in 1965, the southern racist conservative senators came to them and said, you need to build into this thing a bar high enough that poor black people in the south, and 60% of black people live in the south right now. It was even a higher proportion back then in the 1960s. So the poor pe black people in the South won't be able to jump over that bar and show up at our all-white hospitals. So they took Medicare Part B, which is the part that pays for hospitalization, and said, we're only going to pay for 80% of the hospitalization. There'll be a 20% gap, which is the gap that you fill in with your Medigap policy now. That gap 
was to prevent black people from presenting themselves in hospitals unless it was just an absolute screaming life ending emergency so from the beginning through the 1960s the reason why the united states never acknowledged health care as a right rather than a privilege was because of hotman's theories and white i mean they were just like intertwined answers i don't know how else to say it and that prevailed right up until the 1980s that that kind of thinking and that kind of opposition to any kind of health care program